Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for standing by and welcome to today's Q1 2020 AutoLive Incorporated Earnings Conference Call. At this time, all participants will be on a listen-only mode. There will be a presentation followed by a question and answer session at which time, should you wish to ask a question, you will need to press star and the number one on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. I must advise you all that this conference is being recorded today, Friday, 24th of April, 2020. Now, without any further delay, I would like to hand the conference over to our first speaker for the day, the Autolive's Head of Investor Relations, Mr. Anders Trapp. Please go ahead. Thank you, Gino. Welcome, everyone, to our first quarter 2020 financial results earnings presentation. Here in Stockholm, we have our president and CEO, Mikael Bratt, our new chief financial officer, Fredrik Vestin, and myself, Anders Trapp. During today's earnings call, our CEO will provide a brief overview of our first quarter results, as well as provide an update on our general business and short-term market conditions. Following Michael, Fredrik will provide further details and commentary around the financials. At the end of our presentation, we will remain available to respond to your questions, and as usual, the slides are available through a link on the homepage of our corporate website. Turning to the next slide, we have the Safe Harbor Statement, which is an integrated part of this presentation and includes the Q&A that follows. During this presentation, we will reference some non-US GAAP measures. The reconciliation of historical US GAAP to non-US GAAP measures are disclosed in our quarterly press release and the 10Q that will be filed with the, F with the SEC. Lastly, I should mention that this call is intended to conclude at 3 p.m. Central European time, so please follow a limit of two questions per person. I will now turn it over to our CEO, Mikael Bratt. Thank you, Anders. Looking now into the Q1 2020 key events on the next slide. Before we start with the formal presentation, I would like to acknowledge our employees for their continued actions and commitment to quality, delivery, and safety during these exceptional times. During the quarter, global light vehicle production fell close to 25% as production in China and part of other markets in Asia came to a stop in early February. And as most vehicle manufacturing plants in Europe and North America closed down in mid-March. We continued to outperform against global light vehicle production as our sales declined organically by 11 percentage points less than global light vehicle pr production declined. We outperformed light vehicle production significantly in all regions. Despite the exceptional weak light vehicle production, we are able to report a strong first quarter. I'm especially pleased with our sales outperformance and that our gross margin was slightly higher than a year ago and the adjusted operating margin was only 30 basis points lower. Our cash flow was actually at somewhat higher than Q1 last year. The task force we set up to initially manage the situation in China has been expanded to global scale and have been able to act promptly with timely cost reduction actions to offset much of the headwinds from the weaker light vehicle production in the quarter. We were able to safeguard our supply chain and made sure that no customer was affected by lack of auto leave products. We have undertaken a number of actions to manage the evolving situation, including adjusting production and shorter work week hours to meet lower demand. We have also reduced or suspended investments and spending that are not critical for daily operations, accelerated cost savings initiatives, furloughed personnel, often in government-sponsored programs and reduce compensation for executive officers and board members. We have intensified working capital control through strict inventory control, close monitoring of receivables, and close collaboration with suppliers. In addition, we have canceled a dividend, drawn fully on our revolving credit facility, and thereby secured a liquidity of 1.5 billion US dollars in early April. So far, we have not seen any changes to the sourcing behavior of our customers. During a quarter, our